All right, today I've got an unboxing that is really, really exciting because I have three knives here that are probably the most talked about knives in the knife world uh, in the last two or three years. And they are the Kramer Euroline stainless steel, carbon, and Damascus finish. Now, before I go any further, I want to thank the folks over at Cutlery & More for sending me these knives as a review sample. Uh, by the way, even though they are review samples, I will not be sending them back because I do not want to send these knives back. I've only held them once. And uh, <laughs> and typically, when you get review samples, you're supposed to send them back. But I'm going to make the announcement on YouTube. I am not sending these knives back. Okay, so hopefully you guys were not expecting them back. Uh, anyways, so these knives here were sent to me and they are just knives that I've been waiting for for a very long time. So I'm not gonna talk too much. Uh, this will not be a review. This is really just an unboxing and a look at all three knives and a side-by-side -side look. A lot of you guys have been asking about that. So luckily, uh, for some reason, whenever you guys ask for a knife, I get them. So, uh, you know, these knives I was not able to afford when you guys were originally asking for them when they when I started, uh, when I launched this channel. You know, these knives are 200, 300, and 400 dollars. And I didn't really have the money for it. And so luckily, uh, Cutlery & More came on board as a partner to the channel and they sent them to me and so yeah we're gonna open them up take a look real quickly and just um give you guys some you know really really good eye candy or knife porn as some people call it uh so we'll start with the stainless steel knife let's put these aside here okay so this here is the low end version low end meaning it's a 200 dollars knife by kramer um zwilling by kramer uh, so these knives here were actually licensed by zwilling from Bob Kramer. Now, if Bob Kramer wasn't a gazillionaire before this licensing deal happened, uh, he is one now because these knives are incredibly hard to find in stock, especially the carbon steel version. So let's have a look here. All right. So here we are. So this one here is made of uh, FC61, uh, which is heat treated to a 61, uh, oddly enough. And it's a stainless steel version. Uh, this knife here is very, very nice. I can see here that the polishing of the spine is very well done. There is a slightly sharp uh, crease here, which is uh, where the knife meets the handle, which is not really, it's really not a problem at all. It's just uh, something I've noticed here. But overall, the polish is decent. The handle is very nice, very girthy and definitely a very customized handle. You can definitely tell that this was not a stock handle that uh, Zwilling had. And this is a polymer handle, which is similar to a palm handle. Now, most of the European knives will actually use a polymer handle of some sort. And so they are really nice because they are heat resistant, uh, water resistant, and stain resistant. Um, also shrinkage resistant, which is very important. Um, we don't recommend you putting knives in dishwashers, so don't do it. Uh, but these uh, these handles actually can survive a dishwashing cycle. Yeah, so this here is uh, it's a hybrid profile, which is basically a kind of a hybrid between a Japanese and European design. So this handle definitely is more a European design handle. But the blade, you're looking at more of a taller gyoto. So you have a straighter profile with a uh, you know with a wider or a taller height which a lot of folks really tend to like right now. Um, I actually really do like profiles like this. Um, my current budget favorite knife that has this profile is a Dalstrong 8 inch uh, Shogun, which is a really, really nice knife. And so I will be comparing that knife against this knife here because they're not quite in the same price range, but they are in the same category in terms of where they sit. Uh, so being heat treated to a 61, which is really interesting because you don't see many European knives heat treated that high okay so even though this is a Kramer this is still a Zwilling knife and so they're really kind of uh, letting Kramer control the quality of these knives and letting them uh, letting or letting him uh, control the specs of these knives which is really really nice even though the handle is actually quite girthy and hefty it's not very heavy which is actually surprising it feels very nimble in the hand but the blade is very very beautiful and I'm really excited to use this. So uh, I will have a full review of all these knives, hopefully within the next month or two. Um, as you guys know, I don't like to give reviews on knives uh, after one, you know, one usage or one session out of them. Um, I really like to sharpen them at least a half a dozen times to a dozen times and use them in the kitchen for at least 
three to four weeks before I really give you guys a full review. So I will do a review from, on all these knives, but you just gotta wait for that. Uh, I really wanna give you guys a proper review of my knives. But very, very nice. I mean, very, very sharp. I mean, razor, razor sharp. But very beautiful knife overall. I mean, this really feels like a uh, definitely a knife that is worth your money. Uh, my one gripe about this knife so far is for $200, why are you sending me a knife in a plastic shell? Come on, Zwelling. I mean, <laughs> uh, these boxes, these wooden boxes or these uh, paper boxes cannot cost more than a few dollars to make. So I know you guys are trying to save some money here, but for $200, uh, there are knives for half the price that will actually give you a better box than, than what you get here. So, but anyways, that's my one gripe about it. Uh, very beautiful knife so far. I mean, I really like the way the knife feels. I'm really curious to see how it compares against the carbon and the Damascus finish. So let's put this knife right over here. Okay, so let's look at the carbon knife next because it is next up the line in terms of the pricing scale. Very nice box. Are you ready? Okay, here we are. Oh, whew, that is pretty. Ooh, man. <sighs> okay, let's stop drooling for a second and let's just talk about the knife. Oh my goodness, that is beautiful. Oh. You know what's really special about holding this knife and, and well, even the stainless steel one, but just this knife right here, I really feel like I'm holding a piece of history, a piece of artistry that you really don't have much of these days. Uh, and for you guys who actually follow Kramer's knives, uh, his knives, the handmade ones made by Kramer himself, sell for as high as, or I've seen them for as high as $13,000 on eBay. That is unreal. I cannot believe a knife sells for that much. But uh, like I said, if he wasn't a gazillionaire before uh, this whole licensing deal was rolling, he is now. But man, this is such a beautiful knife. You have a really nice polish. Okay, so this polish here is a high gloss polish, which is not like the stainless steel version. The stainless steel version is a matte finish or satin polish. And also the blade is actually a little thicker. It's about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half thicker at the spine than the stainless steel. I mean, very, very stiff, very stiff knife. Um, I couldn't find the heat treat rating on this knife. I'm guessing it's probably between 61 and 62 on the Rockwell scale. The stainless steel is heat treated to a 61, uh, as I mentioned. But the handle now, you are now getting a wooden handle versus a polymer handle. Uh, you still have the mosaic center rivet, which is very nice. This rivet is actually a true functioning rivet because it goes through the entire knife. Sometimes you'll see a rivet that only shows on one side. Um, I still think that is functioning, they just don't put it all the way through, but uh, having that extra level of detail to have the, ri uh, the rivet go all the way through to the other side is actually really, really nice. You have a, I guess this is a brass, uh, would this be considered brass? Yeah, let's just say this is a brass. I think this is brass, I might be wrong. <laughs> if you look from the spine and you follow down the knife, you can see the tang is actually a full tang this is actually really cool. You rarely see this in knives, is you actually can see the tang come all the way down to the end of the handle. That is a detail that I actually, I missed. See, yeah, it's actually the same thing here. The tang actually comes all the way down. And most knives, you actually will have the tang covered or kind of sheathed inside of the handle. But this is really, really cool. This is something I actually never thought uh, of seeing before, but that is beautiful. And if you can see very carefully, the polish of the tang is the same as the actual knife. So this knife here, the blade portion was actually polished before the handle was attached. And then I'm sure it was polished after as well. But wow, so beautiful. I mean, it feels so good in the hand. Uh, it's not heavy. It's actually, a little, I think it feels even, yeah, it feels about the same in terms of weight as, this, as the stainless steel version. But man, it feels so good. Uh, my hands are kind of small, okay, so these this handle doesn't feel perfect for my hand, but definitely very comfortable. Uh, I can definitely tell you that anyone with a large or medium-sized hand will love the way this handle feels. Um, even folks with, like myself with smaller hands, actually, this is a very comfortable handle. The choil, okay, the neck, very, very sculpted. 
uh, extremely well polished. I mean, this is a mirror polish on the Choil as well. And on the satin version, again, it's a stainless steel. It's actually a satin finish, which is nice. It's actually very, very well rounded. It just doesn't have that mirror polish, you know, that 10,000 grit polish or, or maybe even higher for the Choil and the spine. Uh, so yeah, very beautiful. Uh, in terms of the steel, this is a 52100 uh, carbon steel, which is a very highly regarded steel. And uh, I want to see, I'm actually quite curious to see what the patina development on this knife will be, uh, how reactive it is. Uh, that's something that a lot of folks who use carbon knives or who are getting into carbon knives are kind of worried about, um, of their knives rusting or forming patinas just too quickly or out of control. So I will give you guys a full report on that. Um, I'll be taking this knife into the kitchen today and I'll be using it pretty much every day for until I do a full review on it. And you guys might see it hang on the wall at some point, but uh, I will take it into the home and I'll use it quite often. Very, very beautiful. Um, now I'm actually really excited to open up the Damascus finish because it's the Damascus. I mean, that is something that caught my attention the first moment I saw it online. So let's put it, uh, you know, let's put them here. How about that? Okay. So here we are. This is the Damascus version. Woo. Oh, that is beautiful. Just feast your eyes on that for just a moment here. I mean, oh. Goodness gracious, that's beautiful. <laughs> you know, I am speechless right now, but I, I need to talk because you can't you can't just stare at me staring at a knife for ten minutes or how however long this video is. But wow, is that beautiful? That's such a beautiful knife. Uh, so this knife here is a ten layer Damascus finish, which is actually really interesting because this ten layered finish looks more beautiful than some 70, 80, 100 layer finishes that I see on other brands. Uh, such a unique profile. I mean, that is beautiful. And it almost looks three dimensional because if you wave this, uh, the blade here, you can see that the the Damascus etching is actually not hardened. It's actually, it, you can really see the layers. That's my babysitter playing with my child. Yes, we got a babysitter for my child so I can make more videos. I'm sacrificing a lot here for you guys, okay? All right, so anyways, back to the video here. <laughs> she said, hi, daddy. I love that girl. Oh, she's the best. Any parents out there? <clears throat> hi, sweetie. <clears throat> hi. All right, so uh, first off, let's look at the blade portion of this knife. So the blade is a SG2 Super Steel. This knife here is heat treated to a 63 on the rock mode scale. Now that's surprising, okay, because 63 is actually getting into that very hard range. Um, 62, I think, is still manageable by most folks. Um, going to the 63 realm, you're looking at very hard, uh, very much easily or very prone to, to chipping, at least what I've, I've heard. Um, I have knives here in the 66 range and I haven't had any problems yet, so I really can't say. But uh, a lot of folks do say that they they don't like knives over 60 because of the chipping issues. That is purely subjective and everyone's experience will be very different. Uh, my experience is I haven't had any issues with chipping with any of my knives. Um, I do tend to baby my knives on my cutting boards and in my storage and how I store them. Uh, so again, I really can't comment on other people's experience. But uh, this knife here is heat treated to a 63, which is very, very high. And the finish of the blade, uh, with the spine, is actually a satin finish, very similar to the stainless steel version, but a better finish. It's actually more well-rounded in terms of the actual spine and the choil. And the handle, coming down to the handle, now we're looking at, I believe it's a micarta linen handle, which is very uh, water resistant, very, uh, very strong. And it's just a process where they take linen and they wrap it up and they actually shape it and then they infuse it with some epoxy or a polymer and it makes it a very very strong handle and also keeps it fairly light so i think this is a little bit heavier i'll have to weigh them at some point to see which one actually is the heaviest but they feel very very similar which is surprising because a lot of times uh my carter handles tend to be a little bit heavier than equivalent wood handles uh, this one is very very nicely done you have a two-tone finish as well so the micarta itself is i think 
Uh, actually, I really can't tell. I can't tell if the micarta linen is actually uh, tan with a black uh, black uh, finish, or it's actually a black linen with a tan polymer. So really interesting though. I mean, this two tone finish is actually really really gorgeous. I love this stop here. That is very unintrusive. It is not very big, and it's not doesn't take away from the overall design of the knife. It fits it really really well. But it's also a really good stop because you can uh, not have to worry about your hands slipping when your hands are really oily or greasy. Uh, but very beautiful handle. Now if you look at all their knives here, this is one of the things that popped out to me the most when I saw these knives. Is the actual profile, not just of the actual blade, but from the handle, from the tip of the handle to the tip of the blade. You see there's a slight arc all the way through. Now I see that and I see and I can tell that there is going to be essentially there's leverage built into the knife which is actually really rare. Uh, most knives if you look at knives very carefully the handle is very straight at the top and the spine is very straight at the top. Okay so to have a knife that has a curvature from the tip of the blade to the tip of the handle and that curvature is very consistent that will give this knife a very different cutting profile. I think that f folks who are rockers and choppers will absolutely love this knife. And also because it is a high profile knife, folks with really big hands will not have to worry about knuckle clearance at all. Even though I have very small hands, I do like knives that are slightly taller in their profiles, which is what this knife is and all these knives are. But man, that is beautiful. So let me put them side by side for you guys and show you guys what they look like here. So we'll put the Damascus there. All right, so here we have it, folks. We have all three of the Kramer knives here, uh, something that you guys don't see very often, something I don't see very often, and I'm so privileged and so excited to have them here. They are just so beautiful. Now, in terms of pricing, you're looking at a $200 knife for the stainless steel version. You're looking at $300 for the carbon version and $400 for the Damascus version. Now, I really can't tell you in terms of performance which one's going to perform the best. The carbon version was actually named knife of the year by america's test kitchen so i mean in terms of performance they chose this knife as the top pick and it won over a lot of other knives now if you went back a couple of years the masamono ks was the knife to buy and at, at the time it retailed for about 240 dollars today if you are lucky enough to find that knife in stock it's about 360 dollars so would you buy this knife for 300 dollars or the masamono ks which is in my opinion, a very, very, very nice knife. But for 360, I would just forego that and buy this knife here. This knife here would be my pick for a $300 knife. I would not pay 360 for a knife that is having quality control issues from what I've read, uh, from what people have been telling me. Uh, but I mean, I have a pretty good copy, but a lot of folks have been complaining about the Masamoto is just really tanking in terms of overall quality. Um, I would not even bother at this point. Uh, at 240, the Masamoto KS was a great knife, was a perfect knife for that price. But for 360, I would just say forget it, get this knife right here. So uh, I will have a comparison with my KS versus this knife here at some point. So if you guys uh, want to catch that video, make sure you guys are subscribed. You guys are probably wondering at this point, is he going to give these knives away or any of these knives away? Because he has about 100 knives in his studio. So yes, I will be giving one of these away at some point. I will announce it when I'm ready to give it away. So if you guys want to shot at one of these knives, make sure you guys are subscribed because they are going to be, yeah, you're going to want these knives in your studio. So again, thank you to Cutlery and More for sending these knives here. I really appreciate you guys jumping on board and being a partner with my channel. And for those who are looking for this knife, I will leave a link to Cutlery More's website where you actually find these in stock because most websites, including Amazon, will not carry these knives because they are just um, that hard to find right now. Okay, so thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.